You now have less than two hours to vote in early in the November election, and tonight the numbers show just how eager people are to cast their ballots this year. Katie Easter has the story live from one of the early voting locations in Lafayette, the Martin Luther King Center. Hey, Katie. Well, Jim, all day we've heard reports of long lines actually wrapping around this building here at the MLK Center on Cora Street. Now, the line actually just quickly moved inside, but you can see there is still a long line outside because it actually goes inside and then wraps around in there. Now, according to the Secretary of State's office, more than 42,000 people have voted early this year in Lafayette Parish. And compare that to the last presidential election in 2016 when fewer than 19,000 voters came out during early voting. Lafayette's Registrar of Voters Charlene Menard says this is the most early votes she's ever seen. If you're interested in voting, I suggest you download your sample ballot, study your ballot. That way your wait in line will not be as long. I think people are waiting like 20 minutes to vote. So if you study your ballot, when you get to that voting booth back here, mm -hmm. it's going to take you three minutes and it should be going fast, fast, fast. Early voting does end at 7 o'clock, but if you're on the way, just make sure you have a valid state's driver's license or state ID. Live in Lafayette, Katie Easter, KTC, TV3. And if you're requesting an absentee ballot, your request has to be received by Friday. Ballots have to be returned by mail or in person by November 2nd at 4.30 p.m. We're seeing an uptick. The Louisiana Department of Health reporting 885 new cases today, along with 18 new deaths. 97% of today's cases were caused by community spread. 600 people are currently hospitalized with the virus. That number decreasing by 9 overnight and ventilator usage climbing by 20. That number currently sitting at 91. After a reported COVID-19 outbreak at Eunice High School, the campus will be closed temporarily. According to the school, five staff members have tested positive. Students will attend school virtually. In-person learning, though, is expected to resume on November 4th. In tonight's rebound, SLCC is offering free online OSHA training courses for the first 150 people who register as part of the campus's commitment to help strengthen the local economy during this pandemic. The online classes are self-paced and include 10 hours of instruction. Those interested can sign up for one of two courses. There's no registration are there no any no textbook fees as well? A register a link to register can be found at KTC.com slash rebound. Whether it's helping you get back to work, making ends meet or tips on handling the day to day stress of living in the midst of a pandemic, we're here for you. Go to KTC.com slash rebound for more. It's called the rebound and it's our commitment to you. And still ahead on Acadiana's news channel at five day one as a Supreme Court justice. A look at today's swearing in for Judge Amy Coney Barrett. That coming up at 521. But first, Rob is tracking the tropics. The latest on Zeta coming up after the break. And as we head to break, here's a look at one Acadiana business hiring workers right now. If you'd like to apply for these jobs or if you're an employer who wants to be featured, visit our Facebook group, The Rebound, Acadiana Jobs. Post on the wall there and you could be chosen to be featured here at 5. Detective with Acadia Parish Sheriff's Officer investigating a shooting incident that occurred on October 22nd, 2020 at approximately 9.20 p.m. The incident occurred on Interstate 10 near mile marker 84. Unknown suspects fired multiple shots into a vehicle as both were traveling eastbound. Five of the six occupants were struck from the gunfire, with two being in critical condition. It is believed that this is not an act of road rage. If you have any information regarding this crime, you are to call the tips line at 789-TIPS or download our P3 app on your mobile device to report your tips anonymously. All callers will remain anonymous and can receive up to a $2,500 cash reward for information leading to an arrest in this case. Be the difference. For Crime Stoppers of Katie Parish, I'm Sheriff KP Gibson. If you have any information on this crime, call Crime Stoppers at 789-TIPS. You could earn up to a $1,000 cash reward.
With your complete forecast, here's KATC Chief Meteorologist Rob Perillo. Welcome back. Well, confidence growing on Hurricane Zeta's forecast track. It's a tropical storm now expected to become a hurricane once again, and we're getting increasingly confident that impacts on Acadiana will be minimal and maybe none at all. We are going to have a front get here as well, so we'll talk more about that. So here's the big picture as high pressure continues to slide off to the east, low pressure to the west, producing winter weather from the southwest into Texas, an ice storm up through Oklahoma, but locally in between we have a tropical storm, soon to be hurricane, working around the periphery of that high and eventually getting introduced to strong southwesterly winds aloft, and that's going to happen roughly about this time tomorrow as the storm will be making landfall. Now, tropical showers building their way into portions of Alabama, Mississippi, Southeast Louisiana, and Acadiana, and that's the way it's going to play overnight tonight. Some scattered tropical showers, no major issues, but we have a couple of nice ones between Maurice and Abbeville and down through Iberia and St. Mary Parish, and we're going to see more of that overnight tonight, so keep the rain gear handy. Nothing that's a washout, nothing that's going to cause travel problems other than wet roadways. So here's the big picture with our tropical storm, and notice this deeper tropical moisture poised just south of Louisiana. That's what's going to be gradually working its way in overnight tonight through tomorrow. So scattered tropical showers. The core of the tropical storm, though, now in the southern Gulf of Mexico after crossing the Yucatan and weakening. Now it looks like we're seeing those colder cloud tops developing around the center of circulation. It's not symmetric, but probably on its way to becoming a hurricane once again. 65 mile an hour winds moving to the northwest at 14. This is going to be important. It's going to be not only moving to the north of on a much faster pace and then to the northeast it may be moving close to 20 miles an hour at landfall which is great because that will limit uh, some of the rain potential not so good if you're on the eastern side of the storm and you have a storm that's uh, say 75 or 80 mile an hour winds you add that 20 miles an hour and you could have easily 100 mile an hour wind gusts along and east of where that storm makes landfall and that forecast track has not changed notice the cone continues to get smaller as we get closer to landfall now now all of Acadiana for the most part out of the cone and that is the good news. There could be a change, but we're feeling pretty confident with the uh, confident with this forecast track. So hurricane warnings, Morgan City on eastward where hurricane conditions will be possible. That includes the New Orleans metro area over through Gulfport as well. And as we look, uh, this is the big news of the day, at least for Acadiana National Hurricane Center now going one to three feet for Chafalaya Bay uh, back through Vermilion Bay. That's good news. Coastal flood advisory. So uh, maybe not much water close to home, but they've upped the amount of water five to eight foot surge over toward Mississippi, four to six for eastern Louisiana and the typical spots that get inundated with water with systems, including Grand Isle, which has had a rough year and down LA one down through extreme southeast Louisiana and eastern Louisiana. That's where we expect the highest surge to be and water inundation levels. Very typical on even just a category one hurricane. So here we go with the graph model indicating those tropical showers here locally overnight tonight. This model's done an excellent job on forecast track. Maybe not so much on intensity, but it brings this back up to a pretty strong category one storm. Uh, here it is at noon tomorrow and then moving in tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. Give or take a few hours. The models are not perfect. Notice we'll see not a whole lot of weather. Some tropical showers here and that storm moving through the New Orleans area. Grand Isle. That's where the worst weather is going to be. Locally, some tropical showers here. And again, this will be moving quickly along into Mississippi by tomorrow evening, a few hours after it makes landfall over southeast Louisiana. And in its way, drier, cooler air moving into Acadiana, where temperatures uh, by 10 o'clock tomorrow night in the lower 60s, and then heading into the upper 40s to lower 50s for your Thursday morning. And we're going to see much nicer weather in the wake of this storm. Now, let's take a look at the winds. This is the graph model, which is usually a little bit too high on the winds, but this is what you you need to plan for Grand Isle, Port Sulphur, 80 mile an hour winds, gusts. These are gusts, maybe over 100 in spots. That's the areas in white that we're showing you. And notice the gusts here in Acadiana, not too terribly high, maybe 34 to 40, maybe 45 in Morgan City, much higher over toward Duloc. You just go 30, 40 miles to the east. We all know it can be a lot worse. And those high wind gusts continue into Mississippi and Alabama. A model maybe a little bit more realistic is the NAM model, but going for much the same for the most part. 
Uh, notice Morgan City, the gusts no higher than 25 or 30. Uh, could be a little bit higher than that, but your 70, 80, 90 mile an hour gusts will be over southeast Louisiana, moving into Mississippi and eventually Alabama down the road. And with that, you're going to get power outages, but not expecting much here. All the power outages, eastern, southeastern Louisiana, uh, moving into Mississippi. So that's where we expect the real weather to be with this system. And as for rainfall, we're going to catch some rain here locally across Acadiana, maybe one to two or less, no flooding. And then farther to the east, uh, this latest model run coming in a little bit hotter, three to six, isolated up to eight. And that's all going to happen in three hours or less. So locally, here's the potential impacts on Acadiana, and they're all minimal, maybe a one to three foot rise on the tides, no flooding expected. Gusts locally for all of Acadiana, all of Acadiana, no worse than 20 to 30, could be a little bit higher in St. Mary Parish and not expecting any power outages, maybe a few sporadic ones, easternmost St. Mary Parish. So the forecast for tomorrow, on and off chances of rain, maybe a little sun in between. And then as we head into tomorrow evening, the weather improving nicely and cooling off. And look at this, some gorgeous weather Thursday, Friday into the weekend. We're looking for sunny skies and cool temperatures. Perfect for gumbo through Halloween and much of next week as well. That's it for weather. We're going to be right back right after this. to any one of them. I'm gonna start with your baby first and I'm gonna kill all y'all. A horrific morning for Annapolis's family ends peacefully after a mother, her son and niece were kidnapped. The victim says her ex-boyfriend showed up at her house this morning with a gun. She was able to stall him from pulling the trigger. The, the suspect, 58 year old Matthew Jones Jr. was eventually arrested at the victim's house. He's facing several charges, including three counts of attempted kidnapping, home invasion and aggravated assault. Chris Walty is in Opelousas, where the victim's quick thinking and an employee's action helped save her life. Chris. The victim is praising God. She's alive to be able to share her story and that her family's okay. She says it's thanks to quick thinking as well as the actions of a Super One employee that she's alive to tell her story. Early Tuesday morning, 58 year old Matthew Jones Jr. showed up at his ex girlfriend's house. She says he came in and immediately locked the door behind him. He pulled uh, his weapon, his gun out, and he put the clip in it. 
The victim, who did not want to go on camera, said Jones told her he was tired and looked angry. She maintained her composure, but was trying to come up with a plan to keep her and her son and baby niece safe. I stayed in the bathroom. I sat on the toilet and I was praying. I was calling on God and I said, God, if you did, I need you here with me now. I said, calm him down. The victim's goal was to stall as much as possible and to get her son out of the house. She eventually convinced Jones to bring them to school, saying she had to sign her son in because of COVID-19 protocols. Jones allegedly threatening to kill her if she said a word. The administrator that came to the door when, after I rung the bell, I said, just please stay here. I said, act like I'm writing. I said, as I signed my son in, I said, my ex has a gun. I said, she said, where? I said, he's in the vehicle. We came together. I said, my ex has a gun. I don't know how serious it, you know, seeing. The victim wrote a note to her son, stuffing it in his pocket, saying, quote, Matt has a gun and will kill me today. In my head, I said, this is not going to be the last kiss that I give him. So I chose not to kiss him and I just kept praying and I said, you go, mom gonna be all right. She was eventually brought to her broken down car at Super One, where she was able to pass another note to an employee who called police. She just kept trying to find ways to get out of it. And thank God that someone responded. And Chief McClendon says the Super One employee is being hailed a hero for his actions, reminding people, if you see something, say something. In Opelousas, Chris Welty, KTC TV3.